the very first Judge Dredd comic books were silly, funny one-shots that were told over four or five pages. They could still be grim, they could still be violent, but they were still funny pages in a comic book for kids. The Dredd of the 1970s was very different from the Dredd we see in 2000 AD today. The story I'm talking about today isn't the first multi-part Judge Dredd story, and it isn't the first story to be particularly dark or grim, but it is the first truly epic, epic story that had far-reaching repercussions for Dredd the character, for Dredd's world, and for us, the readers. The late 1970s was mired in what would most easily be described as political turmoil and financial uncertainty. The decade would be defined by many as a fight for fair representation, for fair wages and for equality in the face of a growing new right. This climate was no doubt the reason we saw such a huge spike in interest in science fiction in the late 1970s. But this burgeoning new genre quickly faced suppression and censorship for subverting traditional values. I don't know if you've heard of Mary Whitehouse, but here in the UK she was quite famous in the 1970s. She was a conservative lobbyist who had successfully managed to curtail sex, violence and anything permissive in all forms of media. TV, film, print, even comic books. And this is the world into which 2000 AD was born. A weekly anthology comic book not dissimilar to contemporaries like the Beano or the Dandy, 2000 AD was presented as stories from the future sent back in time by editor Tharg the Mighty. Each issue was referred to as a program, as in computer program. See, home computers were very cutting edge in the late 1970s. 1977 was the year that the Commodore PET, the Apple II and the TRS-80 were released. This was all very cool and very cutting edge and this was a way for 2000 AD to ride that wave. Each prog would feature five or six different stories with Judge Dredd debuting in prog 2. Judge Dredd didn't start out as this grim, post-apocalyptic story about these giant megacities ruled over by a police-industrial complex. I mean, it was about that, but it was kind of played for laughs. Megacity 1 was shown as a post-scarcity society. In fact, it was a decadent society. There was no poverty, there was no disease. You didn't even have to grow old and die if you didn't want to. Crime existed as a result of boredom not as a result of poverty. Most of the early Judge Dredd stories are these silly made-up future crimes solved by these silly made-up future cops. As Dredd's writers became more confident and, honestly, a little bit more defiant, Judge Dredd started to become this ludicrous parody of the real world. The writers and artists used the comic as a vehicle to satirise consumerism, to critique police brutality and to rail against the boundaries imposed on them as creators. Throughout the 1980s, the Cold War started to loom large in most forms of contemporary fiction and this is no different in Judge Dredd. Throughout all of this though, the comic book never lost that madcap humour that had been such a significant part of it right from the beginning. The seeds of the Apocalypse War are sown in Prog 236. A mass hysteria of unprecedented scale spreads across the entire city. Every citizen is struck with a bloodthirsty passion to fight to the death for the block that they live in. Now these aren't the hab blocks which are shown in the Dread film, which are all named after key 2000 AD artists like Kevin O'Neill or Carlos Escara. No, no, no. These are named after random 1970s celebrities, so we have people killing in the name of Betty Crocker, Ricardo Muntelban, and Frank Zappa. Block Mania, written by Alan Grant and drawn by Mike McMahon, Ron Smith, and Steve Dillon, with covers by Brian Bolland, is told over nine progs. The judges try every crowd pacification method they have, 
sonic cannons, big jets of expanding foam, tranquilizer gas, even good old-fashioned bullets. Nothing works. Block mania refuses to keep spreading, and it stretches the judge's resources thinner and thinner and thinner. And eventually, even the judges themselves start succumbing to block mania, abandoning their posts and going off to join the fight for their block. By the time that Dredd figures out block mania is a Soviet ploy to undermine Mega City One's security, the nukes are already in the air. The Apocalypse War begins in Prog 245 and spans 25 progs. That's six months of a weekly comic. It was written by John Wagner and Alan Grant and drawn entirely by Carlos Esqueda. Esqueda had co-created Dread and he hadn't drawn the book for five years at this point. Coming back after that hiatus and drawing the full 25 prog run is a real touch. I love Esqueda's artwork. I describe his pen work as being quite European has this very gritty, granular quality to it, which I just love. And I think it lends something to this book that a cleaner line style wouldn't have delivered. Also, Eskera is an OG, so you know when you're reading a book by him, you know you're reading a Dread Epic. As hundreds of nukes start raining down over Mega City 1, the city's defences are for naught because all the personnel have been struck down with block mania. The city's fortifications put up a valiant effort, but it's a numbers game. All it takes is for a fraction of a percentage to get through, and they do. This is where Esqueda's art style just shines. His detailed pen work doesn't shy away from showing us all this carnage. The chaos, the death in these scenes are just dreadful. And then he hits us with this one-two punch. Citizens infected with block mania actually start cheering as 150 million of their neighbours go up in smoke. It almost feels cartoony to have a death count this high. 150 million people killed in the opening barrage. And it only goes up from there. But this isn't a bit. The punchline is, hundreds of millions of people are burnt to ash. Dredd's retaliation is equally ludicrous. He launches enough nukes to level East Meg 1 50 times over. Unimaginable destructive power, and also a severe f***ing overstepping of police jurisdiction. M much like in our world, mutually assured destruction was the one thing that had stopped Mega City 1 and East Meg 1 going to nuclear war. So why would the Sovs launch their nukes now? They must have something up their sleeves, right? And yeah, they do. In true 2000 AD fashion, they have this wacky teleportation device that transports all of the nukes that Dread launched into a parallel dimension, utterly destroying an entire world. I don't think you'll see death and destruction like this in any other comic book. Dread survives, but is stuck in an utterly devastated Mega City 1. Anybody who managed to survive that opening barrage is also struck down with block mania, so they're all still fighting one another and just tearing the city to bits. The Apocalypse War enters its next phase as the Sov armies invade what's left of Mega City 1. Soviet Sentinoids, Rad Sweepers and Strato Vs walked unopposed over the city just raining total destruction on everything before them. Any hope of resistance is entirely dashed, as all the survivors are still fighting one another, even as the Sov forces roll over them. Dread is utterly broken. He forms a resistance movement, but he knows there's no winning. The city is lost. He's not even trying to win. He's just trying to make the Sovs pay in blood for every inch that they take. Toppling bridges with civilians still on them. Setting entire city blocks on fire, plunging them into 10,000 degree infernos, melting men inside their tanks, their screams emblazoned on the page. 
rounding up sov collaborators, executing them in muddy ditches. F***ing hell, this comic used to be funny. Judge Dredd had been violent before, it had been dark before, but not like this. This is a significant turn in the tone of the book. Like the city, like Dredd himself, there's no going back to the way things were. As Kara draws Dredd, worn and gnarled and weathered, his skin looks like the bark of a tree, like in those old nuclear test films. The Apocalypse War's second act shows just how far this broken Dredd is willing to go. He hatches a plan not to save his own people, but just to kill as many of theirs as he can. Dredd assembles a squad of who's left, nine judges to ride out one final suicide mission to East Meg One. And it's this sequence here that this whole video revolves around. I said at the beginning that the Apocalypse War was a turning point for 2000 AD, it's a turning point for the character of Dread, and it's this, right here. 400 million people killed in a nuclear holocaust doesn't illustrate my point. It's too big, it's just a statistic. But this one page of Dread's squad stealing a Strato V, the rain slashing down over this scene, the way Dread grabs that Sov soldier, the angle of the knife, that upward thrust implied, that is a very intimate and brutal murder. Dread's not trying to incapacitate these people, he's killing them. And this is how far this comic has come. The guy who fought monkey gangsters and who stopped illegal comic book smuggling rings is now cold-blooded murdering people, right there on the page. Skipping to the end now, Judge Dredd and his team make it to the East Meg One command bunker. They kill, maim or torture anyone who gets in the way of them launching East Meg One's remaining nuclear arsenal at itself. We see one of the last surviving Sov soldiers in that bunker begging Dredd not to do it. There are half a billion people living in East Meg One, most of them civilians. Please don't genocide my people. Dread doesn't even hesitate. And just like that, East Meg 1 disappears from the face of the earth. And Dread doesn't even blink. This isn't justice. This isn't even revenge. This is just mass murder on an unthinkable scale. I find myself asking the question, how are you supposed to feel reading this? Are you supposed to be happy? Are you glad that Dread did this? Is, th is that a victory? Dread returns victorious to Mega City 1, although half of it is rendered completely uninhabitable, half of its population have been completely killed, millions more are left homeless, bereft, desperate in its streets. It's hard to see Dread as a hero in that context. This image of that wacky future cop is forever changed. This might not be the original Dread as he was intended, but this is the Dread we all know today. This is the book that birthed that Dread. If you want to read The Apocalypse War yourself, then there are tons of options open to you. The original progs were published in black and white and I wouldn't really recommend tracking the original issues down. There have been plenty of trade paperbacks over the years. I have the Titan trade paperbacks here. The interior artwork is black and white as the original. The Judge Dread Mega Collection by Hatchet also has the original artwork in there. Uh, book three of that, I think. My actual recommendation, though, would be Rebellion's Judge Dread The Complete Case Files Book 5. Not only because it contains... Block Mania and the Apocalypse War, but actually it's an entire year of Judge Dredd stories in one book. They're really lovely, super cheap, really accessible, and you can get them digitally as well from the 2000 AD web store if you aren't into collecting physical books. 
The artwork was coloured by John Burns when Eagle reprinted Judge Dread books for the US market. So if you want to read US format floppies, this is the only option for you. IDW would then publish The Apocalypse War as part of their Judge Dread Classics series, this time with digital colouring by Charlie Kirchhoff. Those same digital colours were also used in the essential Judge Dread Apocalypse War book by Rebellion. This book is also available digitally, so this is another good option, but I would still go with Complete Case Files Book 5. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you wanted to get into Judge Dread and maybe didn't really know where to start, then buying the Complete Case Files Book 5 and reading The Apocalypse War is about as good a place to start with Judge Dread as any. Like I said, this is the turning point for the modern Dread, so this is a really good place to start. Thanks for watching all the way through. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. This is the first comic book video I've ever done. And I would love to do more videos about Judge Dredd, 2000 AD, British and European comics in general. So if you did enjoy it, please let me know and I'll see you in a future video. All right. Ta-da.